Hello, and thank you for joining us for our presentation, Navigating the IAC QI Tool, Collect, Measure, and Improve. I am your presenter today, Katherine Gibson. I am the Director of Accreditation for the Division of Echocardiography at the IAC. Our objectives today include describing the measures of quality improvement, discuss goals and benefits of the quality improvement tool, and explain how to use the quality improvement tool. Assisting me today um, on the panel will be Ann Groves, our Senior Clinical Specialist, and Sue Jensen, our Senior Clinical Specialist, and myself. And here's our contact information. We are always here to help. If you have any additional questions after this presentation, um, call us anytime. So let's briefly go over uh, what quality improvement measures are required in an accredited facility. So for adult echo only, we require test appropriateness be reviewed. Um, for pediatric and adult, we require the technical quality to be reviewed, your interpretive quality be reviewed, and then also the final report complete list, completeness and timeliness. That one is always a tongue twister for me. For adult, correlation is a recommendation. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It's still really great and it gives you lots of opportunities for improvement, but we do not require correlation anymore for adult echo. However, pediatrics, we still require it. So this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, I'm going to state this and I'm going to ask Sue to explain it. A minimum of two cases per modality per quarter must be evaluated and the same cases may be used for all the required measures. So Sue, we get this question a lot. Do you mean two cases per doctor? Do you mean two cases per sonographer? What do you mean? What, what do you we guys mean, mean? We mean two cases per facility, and that even includes if you have multi sites. This is a minimum requirement, but we only require two cases per modality you're seeking accreditation in per quarter to be reviewed. Exactly. It's a very easy minimum to reach. Um, if you're doing more, we always encourage that more is better, better information, more data, uh, but we only require two. All right. QI program requirements um, for your meetings. We require a minimum of two QI meetings per year, one of which is to review the results of your QI analyses and any additional QI related topics. All staff must participate in at least one meeting per year. Um, the facility QI documentation must include, but of course is not limited to, the data for all the QI measures, minutes from the QI meetings, and a participant list. So here are some benefits to the QI tool. It's free, and again, who doesn't like free stuff, right? So just by having an account with us, you have access to this uh, just straight from your portal. Um, the QI tool helps you review and evaluate your studies and reports for all of the QI measures, except for correlation. That's the only one that's missing. It meets all of the requirements, again, except for correlation, uh, meets all of the required components. Um, it is going to create a report for you that identifies opportunities for improvement. And we're going to get into uh, some examples of that. And what it's going to do is provide some data-driven objective measures of what your QI process is or your progress. It also satisfies other quality initiatives like the maintenance of certification, and it will allow you to benchmark your findings internally. The QI tool is also great for training new staff. If you, um, you you can evaluate their work along with them, and then it gives you opportunities of improvement for that. The purpose, of course, is to educate how to perform a self-assessment and a peer review of your own cases. It will allow you to recognize deficiencies and also implement a corrective action plan or a process improvement when you do identify these deficiencies. 
so Anne, how do I access the QI tool? You can get to it by going onto the portal. And once you um, sign in at the top, there'll be a tab there for quality improvement. Perfect. Uh, just wanted to note one thing that we didn't say, the use of the tool, not required. It's just there to help you. First thing before you access the quality improvement tool and before you start assigning your cases is you're going to create QI users. So to, um, to access this, what you're going to do, or at least to assign a user, is you're going to go to your Manage Staff tab and then you're gonna click on create user next to that staff member's name. All users must be, uh, must be entered and complete an email verification process before they appear on the list. The QI self-assessment tool really just has three parts and we'll, we'll kind of break it down a little bit. First part is selecting the cases and the second part is reviewing the cases and then the third part, of course, is assessing the summary or the report that you get when you're when everybody is completed. So let's go through how to how to do this, how to enter cases. So after you've clicked on that QI or quality improvement tab that Anne pointed out to us, you're going to come to the screen here, and in the top left corner where you see QI overview. Um, you're going to click on the modality. In this example, we've clicked on nuclear or pet. Um, if you can choose, it will also say adult echo and pediatric echo for echo. Then you're going to click on create new assessment. And after a new assessment has been created, you click on enter cases. So each case that you enter, and you can enter up to 30, you'll have to click add case. As you add the case, you're going to give some patient identifiers. Um, in keeping it simple, just do what you do for us when you submit cases to us for your application. Uh, the first three letters of the last name, first three letters of the first name. Exam date, case type, which I, well, I'll go into what types of case types we have in ECHO. And then you're going to select interpreted by performed by, um, and note, they will not show up on the screen if you did not enter them. So you might have, you might be prompted to go back to create a user. And then any other identifying information is optional. Um, I like to say put an MRN or something, accession number, something like that, and that will alert your QI reviewer as to which case on what day, it'll, it'll help them. So in adult echo, we have a couple of different case types to choose from. Uh, there is general, which is general questions about an echo. They kind of reflect what our old uh, forms used to say. And then we've also added aortic stenosis case types and regional wall motion. Um, this is really helpful because the questions came right from your application review findings and the review form. So they really are the answers to the test. And one helpful hint that you could, you could do before submitting any cases to us for reaccreditation is to use the QI tool to evaluate the cases yourselves to see how well you'll perform on accreditation. Just a helpful hint. After you've entered all your cases, you're going to assign staff. So, each case in an assessment can be assigned to one person, but it's better to assign it to multiple reviewers. Um, there's, there's lots of reasons why. So Sue, why is it better to assign multiple reviewers to one case? Well, then you can compare notes and you can see how you guys agree or disagree on things, and that'll give you more information to discuss in your QI meeting so everybody's on the same page and consistent. Exactly. If you're the only person in the lab doing it or that can do it, that's okay too. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It's just helpful to get feedback from other people. Um, a good QI program involves everyone there, medical director, technical director, all of the staff. And then that way, you know you're getting feedback from the doctors as to what they want to see you do. 
So when you're assigning your staff, you'll just see this little page come up. This will be a list of every QI user and their email address. If you don't see them on there, that means you didn't add them again. So here's another prompt to tell you create user. After that, your uh, reviewers will get an email that will tell them they have cases to review. Uh, sometimes this goes to a junk mail. So if you are waiting for them to reply and they haven't gotten to it yet, tell them to check, check their junk email folder. Um, that happens. And then they will log in and they will click on review my cases. So here's just some sample questions. Um, this is more of the general, and I know this is kind of tough to see, but the questions include questions about appropriate, appropriate use, um, technical quality, interpretive quality, report completeness. Um, and they are yes, no questions, and there's space for comments. Um, if you have comments that might help on the technical quality, or let's say it's not one of these prompted questions, there's a big clot that they didn't comment on, put, type that in the comments. All right, let's get into some fun examples. All right, here would be an example that you as a reviewer would get your case, you would open it, and one of the review questions for an aortic stenosis case is, was the aortic valve velocity acquired using the dedicated continuous wave transducer in at least two standard views. I opened up the case and I only had these two tracings of non-imaging probe. So Sue, yes or no, was it used in two views? No, this is a no, even though there's two views, both of them are from the same uh, level. They're both from the apex. So this is a no question. Exactly. All right, next slide will be same question, different study. So Anne, was the aortic valve velocity acquired using the dedicated continuous wave transducer in at least two standard views? Yes, it was because they used it from supersternal notch and right sternal border and they labeled them. Yay, we love labels. All right, um, we'll go back to Sue. So I'm going to read the question, and this is a report question. So it's a sample of what will come up on your on both, or actually all three, general, LV, and um, AS cases. Was the LV regional function correctly reported? So this report states this. The left ventricle, or the left ventricular size is normal. There is borderline concentric LVH. Overall, left ventricular systolic function is normal with an EF between 60 and 65%. The diastolic filling pattern indicates impaired relaxation. So did they comment correctly on LV regional function, Sue? They did not. The report text is missing a comment on regional wall motion. They have a global wall motion comment, but not a regional wall motion. And if there's no regional wall motion abnormalities, then say it's, there's no normal, no regional wall motion abnormalities. <laughs> Exactly. Yep. We won't know if you don't tell us. All right. So I think you kind of get the gist on how, but we wanted to provide those examples of how to review your work. So once everybody has finished their assessments, um, you can log in and look at your assessment ID and everything will be not grayed out anymore. And you can click on view report. So here's an example for each case within the assessment. The report will show a breakdown of responses to each question and scores each question based on these responses. So for this case and report, two staff members said it was an appropriate case and one staff member said that it might be appropriate. And there's also a place to add some comments. So they commented, one said, or two said it was perfectly appropriate and one just said it might not have been clear as to why we actually did this DEE. So then, this will give you something to talk about at your meeting. So here's your, again, we have a couple of agreement on all of these, but one person said, I don't know, I think these apicals were foreshortened. So you might wanna look at that case with the person who performed it. 
interpretive quality review. So here's one where we kind of have a gotcha here. I would like to point out that there is an opt-out answer for sonographers for interpretive quality review, but please note that if you select this, you will still need to have a physician review two cases for interpretive quality to meet any QI requirements. Um, just, just an FYI. Again, if you have any more questions about that, contact us, please. And then here's again, report timeliness and completeness, pretty simple. Did the final report include an indication? Uh, questions like that. So at the end of this report with all the agreement and the comments, you will get a, um, an overall case quality and overall staff agreement score. Um, each case is scored on these two things. Uh, please keep in mind that it's better, again, to assign more than one person to an assessment. If you don't, your agreement score will be 100%, which isn't really helpful when trying to decide, you know, what variability there is between reviewers. Um, so this is also great information to present and discuss during your QI meetings. So why didn't you all agree on this? Um, so I'm, I'm sure you're going to find that these discussions are really interesting and helpful in, ide in identifying any areas that need improvement. And here's just another example of how you can look at the data. Um, it's just a graph, but I think it's a really nice representation saying, okay, well, we're doing really good on test appropriateness. Where is the area of improvement we, that we need the most? What should we focus our quality improvement on this year? So maybe you see we got 89% in interpretive quality review. That's still pretty good, but we could do better. We could get it to 100. So let's, let's take a look and see how we can do that. So what am I going to do with this data? Were there discrepant, discrepant answers between your reviewers? Well, yeah, we saw that in some of it. Um, were there any wrong answers? Well, then that's where the medical director probably needs to come in and review. Um, if you had a wrong answer, someone said that the, the views were for shortened, but the other two people said that they weren't. So maybe the medical director needs to kind of discuss that with the person who identified them as being foreshortened. Um, what are you going to do to correct it? Is it education? Is it maybe you need something in your PAC system updated to pull numbers over from your machine to your reporting system? What you should do, though, is definitely discuss these results in a QI meeting. Document all of these uh, findings and the plan for process improvement in your meeting minutes and keep them on file. And it is important to note that the IAC doesn't look at your QI tool stuff. We don't care what your scores are. We're happy that you're using it. We're happy that you're taking the time to identify things that can be improved. Um, we don't hold anything against you with your scores. Nothing goes into that. This is purely for you, for your facility to, to improve. So what's next? So you've identified your issues and now you need to determine what's needed to fix it. The best thing to do is clearly define what the problem is. So we saw that this, this TEE group decided that interpretive quality was the lowest score. That's what we want to improve. So what's the source of the problem? Is it you have some new staff that might need a little bit of training? Um, is it that, like I said, is it your reporting system not pulling the right numbers over? What is it? So now you're going to act on that. You want to describe exactly what the change is that you're going to make will take and place a time frame for the change. Let's just say that, you know, you, you plan on buying a new pack system and that's going to take two years. Fine. Document it. If it's just we really want so-and-so to learn a little bit more about diastolic function so they can report it better, um, we're going to send them to a class. Perfect. So then what's next? After you've put your process in motion and you've had a few months, test the change. Um, use the QI tool again. So what your data will measure is whether the change is due to chance or, or not. 
you may need to reconsider what the problems actually were. Um, you might need to continue to improve the process by extending you know, your training. Maybe this person needs a little bit more training. It's all good. If you need help in learning how to document your QI meeting minutes or process improvement plans, there, are, there is a sample document on our website for quality improvement meetings. This will also kind of help keep you uh, organized, your attendance, anything like that. Okay, so also under the quality improvement tab, on the left-hand side, there is a section for QI analytics. This will help you run your reports. Uh, administration loves reports. So here we go. You can select a report to run on the QI tool usage if, if you care. Uh, case quality or staff agreement is really what we care about. Um, you can track the overall case quality scores or how often your staff agreed. So get, out, get the variability out of there. You can choose if you want to just track one measure. Um, in this case, we were talking about interpretive quality, so I might want to run the report for just interpretive quality, but later you might want to see a graph of all of those measures. And then you can choose a site if you choose, if, you, if that's how you run your QI program. But in this one, they've only tracked the technical quality review and they only started in January. So as you use the QI tool quarterly or monthly, however you determine you want, well, you should do it at least quarterly um, as required by our standards. But if you want to do it monthly, you can. And just see how you improved. They got 90% here. So maybe their goal next time will be to not dip below 90%. And then for March, they want to get to 100. It's a good way to track it. You can track all of them. You can see where you're, where we're a little lower here on technical quality. And then there's another tutorial um, also inside of your QI tool if you wanted to hear someone else talk about it that wasn't me or Sue or Ann. And in summary, quality can be improved by looking at the work that's performed, how it was done, and how it can be done better. Um, quality improvement is is always changing. You should always be able to identify something within your facility that you can improve upon. So we just hope this tool is helpful to you. All right, thank you so much for joining us for this presentation today. Um, if you have any questions about the QI tool and its usage, how you can incorporate it into your facility's quality improvement program, you can call us at any time, email us, we're all helpful and we're here for you.